Welcome to another episode of Alpine Garage. We're gonna go through our engine build kind of as a summary because I didn't do a lot of videos on the assembly of the motor. We did individual pieces that we modified, but not the whole thing, so here we go. We're about to put the body on it, and once we get the body on, it's gonna be hard to get video of it. So here it is, minus some spark plug wires and the vacuum tubes and belts and things like that. We are actually a complete motor now. So where we started with this is we took a 1997 Explorer engine, which actually came with this build. We bought it from Matt's Garage here on YouTube. And we decided that it was in good shape, but we wanted to do something different. So we wanted to do a 347 build. I've always wanted to build a stroker motor, and this was the opportunity to do that. Now, we started with the block. We took it to a machine shop. They borrowed the cylinders 30 over, and they screwed up a couple of things. They went to go balance the rotating kit that we purchased, and they basically screwed it up. So I had to take it to a second machine shop. I had to buy new rods for the motor. Uh, they did such a bad job. And I had it done a second time. The second time was actually better, but not perfect again. So I ended up doing some of the work myself. In the end though, we got the 347 stroker rotating kit inside the block and it fits great. Did some tolerance checks, which I showed in some videos and everything looks really, really great. Now, then we went to the heads. The heads are GT40 heads, which are known to be good flowing heads altogether by themselves. But because this is stroked out to a 347, it's gonna be sucking more air through. We wanted to be able to not limit that. So we actually ported the heads as well. I would say it's probably a stage one, maybe a stage two port. It wasn't extreme, but it was a lot more than I intended on doing. So I know these heads will flow right. Now then we put a trick flow spring kit in there, and that trick flow spring kit's great for this GT40 from what we've read, because we didn't want to go and take it to yet another machine shop and have another expense and another disappointing experience. So these springs will actually fit on the standard spring purchase. We didn't have to do any machine work to that, but yet they're much stronger springs. The reason why we did that is because we put a pretty hot cam in there, and I say pretty hot. It's a 512 lift comp cams extreme energy cam, which is supposed to be really good for this motor for torque setup. So that will help push those valves and springs and kind of get some more uh, air into the motor and produce more horsepower and more torque. So that is the base lower part of the motor. Everything else, I say everything else, there wasn't much stock in the base of this motor other than the block and the heads. Now when you start getting up into the top part of it, which is the intake, because we ported the heads, I felt like we needed to port the intake. Obviously this is the straw in which the motor sucks the air through and we didn't want to have a tiny straw. So we decided to go ahead and port those as well. So we did that porting to where I could put a three quarter inch socket through the lower intake and uh, it fell through every single runner with no issue. So it, I couldn't do a seven eighths, but uh, which I guess is a stage two, stage three, I don't know. Anyway, it has enough air, I think, to make the power that we need. We're not going for huge horsepower, we just want to produce more torque and not suffocate the motor. And then we painted the whole top end and put it together, so now we've got that. Let's talk about injectors. Oh, you may have seen our injector video. There were a lot of debates online about whether or not to stick with the 19 pound injectors that came with the Ford Explorer. Those injectors are known to be good injectors. So, and I tested every injector and cleaned them. And although a lot of them were clogged, they ended up cleaning up great and actually sprayed really nice patterns. So at that point, I felt like it's an easy upgrade because all I have to do is take the intake off and I can take the injectors out. So that's not an issue whatsoever. So I decided to stick with the 19 pound, get a baseline torque and horsepower number by taking it to a dyno, which we'll do. And then if we need to, I might jump up to a 24 or a 30 or a 36 or a 42 pound injector. I honestly think that's way too overkill for this motor. If I do anything, it might go to a 24, but that's probably it. The other reason is because we're using the stock computer that came with the Explorer to run this motor. So the 19 pound injectors will help aid in that tuning. I think we're just gonna leave it the way that it is now. That whole system has been cleaned and tested, uh, which we have a video on, 
Working great, so we left it on there. So I left that for an easy upgrade if we decided to do it. Then you go to the, the camshaft position sensor, which is right here. Now, because we didn't do a, you know, a standard dizzy on this thing, I wanted to stick with the Explorer dress. We went ahead and replaced this cam sensor just in case it was bad. We kept the coil pack. So these coil packs are the same. I haven't tested them yet, but easy enough. We go and start the motor in it. And, you know, one of these coil packs is not working correctly. Bob bang, bang. Put a new coil pack on there, even though I'll have to paint it. And, uh, and we'll be good. So I, I believe we're going to be okay on that. Besides, it drove back to Matt's garage, so I believe the coil packs are probably in pretty good shape. Now, what else did we switch? If you'll notice the crank right here, the crank has been machined to a nub. This used to have a big old weight on the front of it, and because of the way the machine shop did the work, they actually ground most of that down, which isn't a huge deal, but it's just, it looks different from a regular Explorer. So this whole internal is different. We also switched out the water pump, so it's got a brand new water pump on it. We also switched out the power steering pump. Now this is a standard Explorer power steering pump. Looking at it, it looks like it actually is gonna work pretty well with this setup. So instead of rebuilding it, I just went ahead and bought another one. It was 65 bucks and that's kind of where we're at right there. Basically, I just refresh the pulleys, put the pulleys back on, and I'm gonna use the standard alternator that came with the Explorer because I believe it's 140 amp. But anyway, it, it puts out more power than a standard Bronco alternator does. I believe it was probably working okay. But again, if for some reason we need to replace it, it's an easy unbolt and replace. So not a huge issue there. And lastly, our shorty headers. So you saw the video on the shorty headers. We were trying to get long tube headers for this, but we kept the 4R70W that came with that 97 Explorer on the back, and they're known to be very wide, and the frame for the Bronco is known to be very narrow, so getting those headers shoved down in there and actually have enough space to get them bolted on and run fuel lines and, and brake lines and things like that through there, decided to just, after calling just about every manufacturer, I decided to go ahead and just stick with the shorty header. So we got some Scott Drake shorty headers to put on here, they were very inexpensive. They have a boss for the oxygen sensors, so we can run it with the Ford Explorer computer. So that won't be an issue. And then I'll just need to fabricate the rest of the exhaust, which I did on the 74 Bronco, the Bronco to be named later, and that exhaust turned out fine. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm gonna build a custom exhaust for it. It's gonna be relatively inexpensive, but it's gonna have good mufflers on it. And then to finish it up, I put a nice copper heat paint paint job on the motor just to kind of give it a little bit of color. It is significantly lighter than the body, which I knew would be contrastingly like odd, but at the same time, because it's not the same color, I think it might stand out a little bit. We won't know until we get the body on and get everything finished. Most of this copper is gonna be covered by a plethora of vacuum tubes and spark plug wires and coolant wire or coolant hoses I mean, there's, there's so much more dress that needs to go on this that's not on here now. You won't see much of the copper, so just kind of set it off a little bit. Behind it, we have the 4R70W. Basically, it's a stock build. We took it apart, we put all new internals in it because it had some damaged clutches and hasn't been tested yet. I mean, I tested it on the bench with some air. Clutches work great, so there's no reason why this transmission wouldn't shift properly. And then we put the Dana 20, which came with it, we rebuilt it as well, and it is basically a fresh build. So I don't suspect those Dana 20, Dana 20s, you know, they're strong as an elephant. So there's no reason why I should really worry about that too much. And then we have a twin stick shifter kit, which Matt gave us with the Bronco. That came from Tom's Bronco Parts, or Tom's Off-Road now. And, the, uh, and it's a great setup, shifts great. I'm really excited about this engine build. And I really wanted to kind of get this running before we put the body on, but I'm just too stinking excited to put the body on to even try to get this running. So we're gonna put the body on, we're gonna finish out the dress, get the computer on it, we're gonna try to start it and get it running. By the way, this is a complete roller setup, so the break-in's gonna be easy and this thing should run like a top when we get it done. So now the only thing left to do is put the body on it and then finish out the engine. So that's what we're gonna do. Thanks for Hanging with us on this build, it's been, we, we purchased this Bronco in early 2019. I honestly thought I would have it for the most part built in a year and then COVID hit and then 
you know, life happened and now here's where we're at. So I'm excited where we're at. My wife, Mandy, is excited where we're at. And as soon as we get this body on, it is full tilt until we get it done. And I need you guys to keep spurring us along so that we can keep this build going. I want to thank Matt's Garage and I want to thank Nashville Early Bronco, not only for being good friends uh, and kind of poking us along the way, but also for the inspiration to kind of continue with this build. And we're excited to see everybody in a few months. That's a wrap from Alpine Garage. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you in the next video.